how to know if you're really meant to be a filmmaker. We put a lot of emphasis in this world on names and titles and things of that nature. When it really comes down to it, you can be whatever you're doing. If I want to be a basketball player, I can just go start playing basketball. And I'm a basketball player. Do I make money from doing it? Am I a professional? No, but I can still say I'm a basketball player. Same thing that goes with filmmaking. You can start, you can pick up a camera, your phone, you know, the new iPhone 15 Pro, everyone's raving about. It's got a C plug, every, every all this crazy stuff. Guess what? You can pick up that phone, put it in a cinematic mode, and guess what? You are now a filmmaker. You're making films. Don't worry too much about what you call yourself. The reason I wanted to talk about this topic on the behind the scenes for this production is because of the conceptualization of it and what we actually had to do on the day of, which is a small crew. Like I talked about last week, we came up with this short film on a two hour and 30 minute drive back from Orlando to West Palm Beach. So really, we were super exhausted, tired. I had just driven up earlier that day to Orlando just for the meeting and coming back down. So really, I was, you, you would say you think somebody would be tired after driving like four and a half hours and having your know, mental struggle of like being in a film meeting, but I was so pumped and energized to be part of, you know, the project that I'm working on and, and everything. So when it really comes down to it, like I didn't really feel that exhaustion. Well, I did, but I just kind of pushed through it. And because I wanted it so bad, we got to writing a script and made the whole thing. On the day of the production, the crew got here between like four and five, and we started to shoot around 7, uh, 40 p.m. And we shot from 7.40 all the way until about 5 a.m. Um, everyone stayed up super late, they were troopers. We really pushed through to make sure that we got it done the first day. How we set up the production day, originally, it was supposed to be two separate nights, where the first night we're trying to get down as much as possible and, and do we were hoping that we could do a majority of the shoot. And the second night we were gonna have the opportunity to shoot. Um, but things happened. People had to go to events, but other Elijah had to go to a music video shoot the next day. So we had to change our plans because again, this is a passion project um, last minute at that. What we ended up doing was shooting the, throughout the full night as much as possible. And then we were gonna do whatever we could the next morning. But everyone was just so hyped to actually get the, the, the thing finished that we just pushed through to the end. And then the next morning, we just shot the 1950 scene, um, as you see in some of the B-roll here. What was cool about this opportunity was a lot of people didn't really have a chance to ever shoot film to shoot before. So I gave them the chance to use my camera and get behind the scenes. Uh, we used it a little bit because we were actually, there's still only five of us. Okay, for the crew, we had Elijah as the uh, first AC and director. Then we had me as the DP and the gaffer. Um, we had my friend Brooke, she was second AC and Slate. Then we had Amelia, the star actress. She's wonderful. This is the se second time I've worked with her. Second or third. I, she's awesome. Um, and she's the main character in the, in the film. And then I had my friend Carlos, who's a boom operator, uh, as well as like the hooded figure, because again, super small production. We just wanted to keep the crew as small as possible because no one was really paid. Um, and this is all out of the goodness of the hearts. And we had my girlfriend, Alex, do the charcuterie board. She made it look amazing. Um, shout out to Alex. You're probably wondering, when is he actually gonna show the behind the scenes? Well, I got some behind the scenes, but it wasn't enough to make a full video on just that content. It would be kind of boring. So I thought letting you know my thoughts on the actual production, from pre-production to post-production, everything like that would be more interesting and you would get more out of it rather than me showing you the little bit of things that we did. Cause it wasn't anything fancy. It was really just kind of run and gun um, filmmaking with me doing lighting and operating the camera. Um, so it's really one of those things where you, there wasn't a lot to learn on this set. The biggest thing I learned is you can't pay somebody to work from 7, 8, 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. They need to have a passion for themselves. They need to want it and want to achieve the goal together with the crew they have. I think if I had any other group of people, they probably would have been like, hey, at like 2 a.m., can we, can we call it quits? Can we stop? Can we just pick up tomorrow? Like, 
a lot of people would have just threw in a towel. But not my team. They were on top of it and they just wanted to push through. So we kept going. This is a big reason why I wanted the topic of this video to be what it is, is because we loved it. Like we loved doing it enough to a point where we stayed up until 5 a.m. And then guess what? We got up the next day, probably, I think I got up at eight. I got up at eight and, um, and edited uh, daily for the video, you know, the day previous, but everyone else got around nine, 10. And then we got to shooting before like lunch, before noon, we got to shooting again. So it's crazy. Yeah. And here I'll put a quick gear list on the screen. So as far as camera, we had the Blackmagic 4K, we had the Amran 60 and 200X. And then we had two kicker lights that I used um, in the film as well, as, as well as shower curtain, 3C stands. I used bounce cards, these little circular bounce cards for negative fill or, um, I really didn't use them for bounce at all. I just used them for negative fill, the black side. There were four sets. So basically I set up a lighting situation for the kitchen, for the living room, for the outside and uh, staircase, and then for upstairs. For the kitchen angle, what I did was I have a light behind her and then I had which was the, actually the two, I believe that was the 200X I had punched up into the ceiling behind her, lighting her side here. And then I had the 60D giving background lighting to the wall that you see on, on that side here. And then I just had a key light, this little light, and it still's got the paper on it. So if you see this light right here, I actually just had this, I had some, one of my friends hold it and just put the light um, shining so that it was a key light. Obviously it wasn't this color red, but you know, I just turned it on with, I think this is just baking paper, uh, just to soft, like diffuse it just a little bit so it's not as spotty and harsh. And I had that straight onto like her face. It just gave a nice little eye light and si lit properly her face because from the two directions that had my lights, they were kind of like lighting the background and lighting and giving ambience to the room. And I, and I just needed to have a little bit more light on the, directly on the, the camera side. Just a, not, just a little bit. And then same thing for the next scenes in the kitchen, it's kind of the same thing. Living room scene here, I basically just set up two C stands with a shower curtain on it and punched the 200X into the wall and had it come back in towards um, the set. So basically giving ambient to the room. This is the one thing where I think, where I know I, what I should have done is raise the light intensity to be a little bit higher and lower the ISO on the black magic because I couldn't get the right, I didn't get the right balance in camera and I used way too high of ISO for pretty much all the shots. So that was my one learning lesson from this, this cheat is to make sure your ISO is at the right spot and not try to raise it too much because with the, with the camera I use right now, the Z6, I can, what the camera looks like on the back is close to what it's gonna look like on the, on the thing. So my ISO, I never really go too high on this camera just because it only has 800 base ISO if I'm shooting in log 10 bit or 100 ISO as the base for the regular. So you can go a little bit lower and play with that. But um, yeah, just using a different camera system, you have to get used to the ISO. With the Blackmagic 4K, it's a crop sensor camera, so it doesn't let in as much light and the sensor only goes to 6400, so that's his max. So really, I should have never gone above 3200 4,000 maybe, um, and stayed away from the 5,600 because it was just too noisy at that point, and uh, I should have brought in my light. I will say that is one of the things in filmmaking and that I'm learning is like, you literally have to light everything on set. It's just the intensity that you light everything is different. That outside light, outside shoot, I just kind of, uh, I just left it. Um, the light bulb, I didn't change the light bulb that was in there. I kind of left it the same. Oh wait, sorry. So in the living room scene, you see the flash of lightning that happens um, here. And so with that flash of lightning, that was actually just a 60D on using the, uh, the Sidus Link app. I got the setting to be, just flash. it'll just like flash. You can change intensity. You can actually have a trigger so you can trigger it whenever you want to. And that's what we did for that scene there. As far as close-ups and things like that, I really just pushed the, you know, and turned up the intensity of the light or um, got one of these smaller lights and kind of brought it in uh, just to give us a little bit more kick. But most of the part, I just had that. That was pretty much a lighting scenario for the entire night uh, downstairs from the living room. 
Okay, so I'm moving to the hallway. So in the hallway, what I did was, see, this is funny. It, it was like not even a week ago I shot this, like two, two, two weeks ago when I shot this. And I'm like, my brain is already like, what did I do again? So I think I timed it with my aperture, my, um, my Amaran 200X up the staircase. I had it shining into the hallway. So as soon as she hit the, the switch on the wall, I turned the light on. I want to say that's what I did. If not, then the light in the hallway was this, was a good color temperature that I wanted. It was yellow, uh, you like a you know, like a warm hue that I wanted for the actual um, hallway scene going up. And then all of the all of the top scenes in the staircase, I really just lit it the same way. Um, just having the Amaran pushed into the corner and bouncing it around. It gave enough ambient. Like that light is it's a super small hallway, so it was enough to light pretty much everything. Um, in that hallway and I really didn't worry about negative fill or anything like that because it's not too much space to, to bring down exposure I was happy with the way it looked um, just pushing the light into the one corner and going from there okay and in the room the room is the final scene here so in the room I basically what I did for the light scenario was I wanted it to be super dark in there um, basically ambient light coming in from outside and in the hallway you can see a little bit so what i did was i got these small lights right here you know this little light with this uh thing on it and all i did was put uh it to like the coolest temperature i think it goes all the way up to 6500 and then the camera was white balanced appropriately to to be more of a cool make it cooler than it really was um, but yeah, that's these. I used both these two lights and shine them into corners, and that was pretty much the only thing I did for the, the top part. This final scene here with her, um, you know, bloody hands and everything like that. I actually just put the light in the corner right behind her to the left, so that it shined into the wall, and it didn't give too harsh of shadows against the wall behind her, so it was still kind of basically what you call soft light. Um, and give enough ambience in the room to actually bring up the temperature because I use both the lights in different separate corners to make sure everything in the background was lit so she's not just like it's not just completely dark in there it's actually pretty lit even though I color graded it to to become uh, darker day two was pretty easy so I really just used all natural light for day two there's only two two scenes that I, I actually am going to use in the film the first scene is her opening the door and uh, the killer being over somebody's dead body, you see their feet there, you see Carlos, I punch in, just doing something quirky and corny that you would never, you know, uh, just for the film. And her scream was freaking, I had to cover my ears. She screamed the first time and I didn't cover my ears. I had to cover my ears for the first time, the second time she screamed because the first time I'm, somebody's gonna come outside and be like, who's out there getting killed with bloody murder? Yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was a good scream. It was very uh, realistic. So again, just use natural light in both the scenarios. Um, and then uh, the final two parts here where we're in front of these, uh, neighbors have this cool graveyard and body bag. So I just use that as a backdrop and kind of cut it to make sure there's no truck or anything like that in it because there was cars right off, right off the screen to the left there. That's pretty much the breakdown. If you made it this far, you probably are the person that knows they want to be a filmmaker. Um, because this is the behind the scenes that was slightly different. It wasn't a lot of um, on the set footage. It was more of just me explaining things and breaking things down. Uh, more of a cinematography breakdown than a behind the scenes, but I'm a cinematographer, so that's what I tend to do. Next time, I'm gonna try my hardest to get somebody that knows how to do some good BTS. Um, because that was one thing that I kind of wish I had for this scene, this set, just because it was it was cool and there was moments that I wish I captured on video <laughs> that I didn't. But it's all right. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it for this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. If you haven't already seen it, check out this last video I did on the pre-production part of this. Right there. Signing off.